Hi, my name is Michelle Hanks. Welcome back to my channel. If you clicked on that thumbnail, it shows me that you're interested to see what we have been doing this last month when it comes to our finances. This is the October financial summary, okay? What is that? That's gonna be a monthly series that I do that shows the things that we've paid off, the things that we've canceled, the money that we've saved, and the things that we've sold. So who are we? We are Brian and Michelle Hanks. We have a teenage daughter. We homeschool her. We are also past truck drivers. Actually, my husband is still a truck driver, but that means that we have lived the nomadic lifestyle before. We just got paid to do it, right? So we were in a truck together as a family of three for four and a half years from 2010 to 2014. And during that time, we homeschooled our daughter on the truck. She got to see all kinds of amazing stuff. I mean, it was an amazing time in our lives. We actually had a refrigerator and we had a porta potty in that truck and we often joked around that that was um, our RV right that we were living in an RV but we never even knew that this would be something we would want to do full-time so fast forward we then decided uh, well I decided I tried I convinced my husband <laughs> and my daughter that we should go out on the road full-time in two years why two years? Well, because we're actually going to need to pay off some debt, stop spending money, save money, cancel some subscriptions to things because they pile up. Then what we'll do is we will trade our car in for a big pickup truck and we will trade our sticks and bricks home, 2,700 square feet in for like a 425 square foot RV. We're going to live in it full time with our daughter for at least two years. It'll be beginning in her senior year, and then we will stay another year afterwards. She'll then uh, pursue college after that, but my husband and I will probably stay in the rig at least another four years. So we are committing right now that we want to do this for a total of six years. All right, so right here at the beginning, I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. We need you to hit the like button, and I would love it if you'd start having conversation with me in the comments below because... I would love to see what are the things that you did when you started the debt freedom journey. I think everybody has a different reason that they're doing it. Most people, it's because they want a huge lifestyle change, and that's what it's going to be for us. I'm going to be doing these videos every month right around the 23rd. These are the financial videos, the ones that will show you guys what we've accomplished during the month, so you can expect to see that. I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. In fact, if you've probably watched this video, you are a subscriber. So let me tell you, I appreciate you. It means a lot to me that somebody would sit and listen to me ramble for 20 minutes. And I hope this was 20 minutes. <laughs> this is the October financial summary, okay? What is that? That's going to be a monthly series that I do that shows the things that we've paid off, the things that we've canceled, the money that we've saved, and the things that we've sold. All right, so if you want to check out the video right above my head, I'm going to post the link to the video for the September financial summary. Stay tuned to the end. I'm going to be talking about what I think is something that you could add to your debt freedom journey. It isn't only about paying off your bills. What else can you do? All right, I'll talk about that in a minute. August 23rd starts the first paycheck that we decided to start paying debt off and stop spending money. Actually, little secret, that's all about me. <laughs> I had to learn how to stop buying things. My husband doesn't have any problem with that. He works extremely hard, makes a very good income, and I was spending it all the time. If you watch a previous video, it talked about my addiction to Starbucks. And yeah, that is a difficult thing for me. I am working on that, but I was spending a lot of money every month on Starbucks drinks. The other thing about our family is that we haven't had any savings. And we've been married 25 years. In the beginning, back in the day, we thought we had to go into debt to buy carpet and buy furniture for our new house and all those kinds of things. And it just started snowballing and snowballing. And then we just started buying dinners out all the time. And then we would pay some down and then we would rack it back up again. And then we would pay some down. And it's this, you know, yo-yo back and forth. I mean, you've probably experienced it too, right? So I went back and listened to last month's video and it was 26 minutes long. I'm gonna tell you a secret. It was actually 47 minutes long, but I condensed it down to 26 minutes. So this video is gonna be way shorter. My goal is to get this under 20 minutes. All right, ready, set, let's go. 
All right, number one, the first thing that we did, which is a carryover from last month, is we sold things on Facebook Marketplace. All right, you can do Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or eBay. I don't have anything that maybe will need to be put on eBay, but Facebook Marketplace right now is the thing that everybody's using. We didn't sell as much this month as we did last month. Right now, we've only sold $82 and change worth of things out of the house. Last month, it was three times that. I think that Facebook Marketplace is one of the best ways to get money fast because most of us have things in our house that we either don't use or we don't need. So that's the first place I would go if I were you is whenever you start a financial goal, start pulling things out of your closets, out of your spare rooms, out of your living room that you just don't need anymore. Maybe even your garage. Although my husband won't let me sell any of his tools, but I will say you can easily make some money on Facebook marketplace. Number two is going to be what did we do in savings this month? Last month we saved $300. Guess what? This month we saved another $300. So we are now at $600 saved. We have never had a savings account before. I mean, maybe a small one, but I immediately would go spend it. I would immediately find something I had to have in order to go use it. This is my second month. This is another huge accomplishment. One of the reasons why we've been able to save money is because I've stopped spending money. Back in the September video, I discussed the fact that I stopped following people on Instagram in order to stop spending money because it's so easy to see all of these cute little things like we do essential oils. And so there's diffuser bracelets, there's essential oils bags, there's all kinds of different little things that go along with essential oils that all of these wonderful women are making, but it's, you know, $35 here, $45 there, $15 there. So that's the first thing I did was stopped following on Instagram and Facebook, any companies that sold things. That's been one of the biggest things I had to do to myself. My husband doesn't have a problem with that. That is a big deal to save $600 for us. My original goal when I said I wanted to do this was let's save $100 a month. Again, because we were starting from zero, so $100 seems like a big deal, right? Well, the first two months we've been able to save $300 each month. I've kind of changed my goal now. Now that I know it's possible and we're still paying down debt, now I know for a fact we're changing that to savings $300 a month. That will be our bare minimum so that the at the end of 24 months, that's going to be $7,200 and that will be something we can either use as a down payment on a vehicle or we can use it as an emergency fund for when we leave. I mean, it's a no brainer. I, I'm, I'm actually very impressed with myself and my, again, my husband has no problem saving money. This is all me. Um, I'm the one that had the problems. So we're having to correct me for the most part. We started all of this with a total of 13 credit cards. Nobody needs that many credit cards. If you're young, under 20, under the age of 25, don't get a bunch of credit cards. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, uh, that's my rant. <laughs> when I said to my husband, I wanna do this, are we in agreement? He said, yes. I said, okay, August 23rd, the first paycheck we're gonna use, we are going to go from here moving forward and we're not, I'm not gonna spend money anymore and I'm gonna pay debt off, right? So we have started with three school loans, 13 credit cards, a house payment and a car payment. Last month, we paid off our smallest credit card bill, $500, easy. That we've done before, we just immediately went and put money back on it. So no accomplishment there, but this time I closed it. So we paid it off and closed it, it's gone. This month, I paid the next smallest one down. I thought it was at 1,200, but actually it was $1,000. And we paid that off after three weeks, actually. It didn't take us a full month to do it. And I have closed that credit card. That brings us down to, now we have only 11 credit cards. We do have the three school loans. We are only paying on one of those. Two of them are in forbearance, but they will not be in forbearance next year. And what I'm trying to do is create an environment where we're gonna be able to pay them finally instead of keeping them in forbearance because actually every month we are increasing our debt with school loans because interest is piling up. And I know that that's the, th the case. I know that that happens, but at the time we just couldn't do anything about it. This is my budget by paycheck workbook. This woman is the budget mom. She's on Instagram. This has been a key thing. I've actually had this since January, but I didn't use it because I was trying to avoid all of my own problems. 
<sighs> don't avoid it anymore. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, so let me look on my numbers here. Our school loans actually have continued to increase because of the interest. I'm going to be putting right up here the actual real numbers because last month I actually said the wrong number and I was $9,000 off. And then what I'm gonna show you guys is now what we have right here. And this is gonna be as of today. So the difference of, I wrote all this down. I'm very, very, very methodical about numbers. In the last month, the amount of debt that we paid off was, put it right here, right here, $1,656.20. That's how much debt we decreased in this month. So a running total of two months in that we have decided, me, sorry, that I have decided stop spending money, pay things off. We have paid off $2,202.93. That is a 2.7% payoff of our total debt. Again, that doesn't include our car or our house because our house is going to be replaced with a trailer payment and our car is going to be replaced with a truck payment and I have to budget for those. But the goal is to get debt free before we get there. At least credit card debt free, right? One of the things that I found was paying these bills down after just two months has given me $170 more per month to pay other bills. So the snowball effect is happening here, right? So the next balance that I'm going to be paying is one that is $1,100. That'll be the next card. Because I was thinking that the one I paid off this month was gonna take me to the end of next month, well, now I know. <laughs> I'm gonna pay off another credit card at the end of November. And one of the biggest reasons that that's gonna be easy is because I have decided that I am going to work at UPS during the holiday season. And I did it last year and I loved it. And so what I'm doing this year is I'm just gonna be delivering packages, which I love to do because this kind of satisfies that desire in me to wanna to buy things. Next, I'm gonna be sharing with you a few ideas on what you can do instead of only paying off debt and limiting yourself I kind of have a different idea about that. Most times when you are sharing with somebody that you want to uh, become debt free, the first thing they say almost every single time is, oh, you've just got to stop spending money and pay off your debt. And 150% that is truth. The problem is most times that can become a limiting thought process. How do I limit myself? Just like when you're on a diet, I've got to cut this out. I've got to cut that out. And if it's not enjoyable, it feels like a burden on you. There are times when we are paying things down and if we don't look at the numbers, if we don't actually pay attention to what we're doing and looking at the numbers on a daily basis and checking the progress that we're making, we can end up feeling like there's a burden on us because all it is is limiting thinking right? If you end up always in that negative, you're, you can't have that, you can't buy that, you can't this, you can't that. Just like, again, in dieting, you can't eat that, you can't have ice cream tonight, you, you have to eat less food, people, <laughs> right? That ends up becoming a negative and it's going to be hard to sustain it long term. What I think is people should constantly be thinking creatively in how can you make money, right? What are some ideas? One, sell your stuff. That's the easiest way. You're not having to go get a second job. You're not having to ask anybody for money, right? You're selling the things that you already own. I think we actually all have quite a bit of stuff that we don't use anymore that we could easily sell. So that's the easiest way to make money towards your debt cancellation, right? The next thing I would say, like I'm doing, go get a part-time job, something that still benefits your family, but doesn't take away from. Now, if you're a single person and you don't have any children, working a second job might actually introduce you to new people and it can be a good thing for your life. But if you're a single mom with children, a second job might not be feasible because then that takes away time from your children. I know so many families that have to do that, but I'm talking about in a situation where you have options and you have choices, that's where I'm saying get a second job 
or a part-time job like for me I have I own businesses but I do have time during the week where I could actually be employed by somebody and it will benefit my family the next thing I would say is get creative do you know how like for me do you know how to take pictures do you know how to do things with your hands do you know how to sew uh, maybe you could walk people's dogs. Maybe you could just find small ways that are not huge commitments that you could then go earn money. When you start using your creative abilities to find ways to earn money, I think that that's more of a positive mental state, right? You're, you're looking for ways to use your talents so that you can benefit others and then it benefits your bottom line. So just consider that. I, I hope that it gives you something to think about because we all have creative abilities. We all have opportunities in front of us. Many times, if we start limiting everything that we're allowed to spend money on, we look at it as a negative. And in my opinion, I think there's opportunity to give up. That's why I am writing everything down. I look at this book every single day. I write down everything that I spend. And think about it, when I'm out and about, now I still eat out sometimes. I mean, I still like a Chipotle. I mean, what do you think, right? Chipotle, that's some good stuff. I will say that I've limited myself on Starbucks a little. I have to ask myself every time I leave the house to go get a Starbucks drink, really, Michelle, do you need this? No, I don't need it, but I still want it. And I really struggle with putting that limiting thinking on myself so stringently that I give up. I don't want to put myself in that mental state. What do you guys do? I don't want to be limiting myself. I need to limit myself, but I don't want to. Could I pay off more debt? Yes, I could. I could pay off more debt. So what are your struggles? Let's start conversations below. What are your struggles? Talk to me about it because I want to be forthright because my goal is to look at these videos like two years from now and see what was I struggling with and have I grown, right? Because I want to grow. I do not want this to be, I don't want spending to be an issue that my daughter learns from me. Actually, she has better spending habits than I do. All right, so here at the end, I'm supposed to post a couple of videos right here, right? So I am gonna post a video of last month's summary, the September summary, and then maybe the other video will be our coffee chat. That's another monthly video that I'm going to be doing, the car coffee chat with my husband, and that will let you guys kind of see the relationship between us and where we are. So hope you guys have a great day. Bye.